Spyware, also called stalkerware, allows you to see another person's texts, emails, phone calls, and photographs on their smartphone. It's often seen in cases of stalking or spousal abuse. Deputy District Attorney Ramona McCarthy says she's seen cases where stalking victims have had no idea how closely they're being watched when spyware is involved. They've tried their best to minimize their public persona, so to speak, online, and yet they're still finding out that their former partner or current partner, usually former partner by the time it gets to this point, are somehow still able to follow them, know who the new person that they're dating, know their new job, and they're just wondering why. And if you click on the icon, it tells you what the configurations are. Alex Liu shows how spyware can intercept a text message and display it on a web portal. Liu is a PhD student at UC San Diego who specializes in cybersecurity. He says all you need is temporary access to a person's phone to set it up as a target for spyware. Lou's research revealed how spyware apps work and their level of security, which is not very high. Oh, there you are. He says many of them use unencrypted communication channels that are easily hacked over Wi-Fi. If the, the app itself is hacked, the problem becomes much bigger because now your data can be exposed to the public. Right? I'm pretty sure you don't want whatever is in your phone to be leaked to the public. There are many apps that can track another person's smartphone, such as Life360 or other apps that let parents see where their kids are. An app is called spyware when it is implanted without the target's knowledge. Though the apps are often used for stalking, Lou says that's not how companies market the apps, as they suggest it has the consent of both parties. So usually they would say, okay, you need the other party's consent. Right, you have to click a button that says, yes, I understand that I, by using this app, I would acquire consent from the other party. But in reality, this is not enforced. Computer science professor Thomas Ristenpart at Cornell University took part in Lou's study. He said on a recent visit to UC San Diego that he contacted customer service for some of these app companies and asked if their product would be good for tracking a spouse. He heard back from nine of them. One, uh... Uh, tool, to their credit, said, no, you know, that's not what this tool is for. It's for, you know, childhood, child safety, and that's probably legal what you're suggesting, so don't do that. The other eight uh, of the nine that responded, responded with something uh, along lines of, yeah, our tool is awesome for that. Here's how you set it up to use it for uh, tracking your husband. Lou says the apps are easiest to install on Android phones, where there are fewer limits on where you can get your apps. Thomas Fudge, KPBS News.